I think the lower music in the states is very black and it's very, and of course Virginia is where the, the, the white people picked up on the black music and made it sort of you know, part of the pop music, popular music of the day. But you can see that uh, <clears throat> the backswing and the, uh, the syncopation much more in the uh, southern music. And I think, uh, you know, I learned West Virginia music, but I had to really think about how to get the swing and the back, the back beat that's more, more southern. And Harold was good about it. Uh, I didn't ever take lessons from Harold, but I sure listened to him a lot, all the time in our dances and things. So I learned a lot from Harold. Uh, and Kentucky, I say West Virginia and Kentucky is very Celtic. And North Carolina and Virginia, and Lower Virginia, is very uh, uh, swing, very. Uh, and uh, I don't know much beyond that. Uh, I know Pennsylvania and North is a lot, a lot of you know, more polka and that sort of oriented, which I love. I love. See, I spent a lot. I spent time in Ireland, and Armin was uh, as good an Irish fiddler as he was a old time, then he went on to learn all the Mexican fiddle tunes. <laughs> but I learned a lot of Irish ornamentation from Harmon. And uh, and I find that in a lot of the, uh, a lot of Southern music too. I mean like Tommy Jarrow would just shake the end of everything, because it's very textural. And uh, Melvin Wine would do certain pieces of that, that Irish. So, uh, you know, the Irish and the black sort of mixing all together, and, and it's great. And I think that music was highly, you know, the, the minstrels would play for the Queen of England. I think that it was, it was one of the first really big, what do they call it, uh, mixing, uh, cult, cross-cultural. And I think that's why, I think it's why we like it today. It's just such a rich uh, blend of our cultures. <laughs>